Happy New Year. It is Monday, January the 4th, 2021. I thought this year would never come, but here it is. My name is George Maxwell. I am the vicar of the Cathedral of St. Philip in Atlanta, Georgia. This is our midday meditation. Let us pray. Days pass and the years vanish and we walk sightless among miracles. Lord, fill our eyes with seeing and our minds with knowing. Let there be moments when your presence like lightning illumines the darkness in which we walk. Help us to see wherever we gaze that the bush burns unconsumed. And we, clay touched by God, will reach out for holiness and exclaim in wonder, how filled with awe is this place, and we did not know it. Amen. Our gospel passage for today comes from the Gospel of John, and it offers, I think, an interesting model of discipleship. It's at the end of the first chapter, verses 35 to 42. The next day, John again was standing with his two disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translates as teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and they remained with him the rest of the day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which was translated Peter. The word of the Lord. So, how are those New Year's resolutions coming? I mean, it's been several days. Are they still holding? After years of making and failing to honor for very long New Year's resolutions, I decided to try a different tact as I enter a new year. And this year, this long-awaited following of the dreaded year 2020 is no exception. But before I tell you what I have done, I want to walk you through this wonderful passage from John. Because there is John the Baptist who looks over and sees Jesus and says, there's the Lamb of God a pointing, a recognition of the coming of the Messiah. And when John's disciples then go to Jesus, Jesus asks them a question. He says, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? They then respond with a question, where are you going? And he says, come and see. There is a question and there is a response. Now, this question and response model, I think, offers a nice picture of discipleship. There is Jesus, the Christ, who is constantly asking us, what are you looking for? And there are times in our life which we set aside in order to think about that question. Often, the beginning of a new year is one of those times, and often resolutions are our response. Now, in the past, when I've drafted resolutions for myself, they had a lot to do with who I thought I really wanted to be. It's always implied in that. Lose weight, get more exercise, say your prayers more frequently, be nicer to other people. Who you want to be is always there in the middle of what are you looking for. And so what Jesus is really doing is asking you to engage yourself deeper and deeper and answer the question, what are you 
looking for. It would be nice to lose a little weight and it would be nice to say my prayers more frequently, but that's really not who I want to be. That's not as deep as I think Jesus is calling us to go. Instead, I have adopted kind of a rule. I try to think about what I am looking for. I invariably stumble upon things that I think I would like to be. I would like to be ways that I think I allow the light of God to shine through me. It's kind of how I think of it, as if I am becoming a better conveyor of that light, which is the divine presence. So this year I have adopted three resolutions, if you will. One, say thank you. Two, out narrate or over accept. And three, read charitably. I'm going to walk through these just so you get a sense of what I'm talking about. To say thank you, of course, is a gratitude practice to express your appreciation for other people or the serendipity of life, God's grace and its presence. It allows me to identify those things in my life I really am thankful for, but it also reminds me as a practice that even in the dark periods of life, even in the unwanted moments, there is grace to be found. There is something to be thankful for. It doesn't mean you want bad things to happen, but it does mean that when they do, there is always something there. If there wasn't, you wouldn't know that they were bad. You wouldn't have a place on which to stand and see the unfortunate thing that you think has just happened to you. So say thank you. Write notes, include them in your emails, but just carry on an expression of gratitude. So that's the first resolution, if you will. The second is over accept or out narrate. Now I've taken these terms from improv comedy. To over accept is to take whatever anyone has just said, no matter how challenging or negative or pejorative its judgment, and over accept it. Include it in a larger story. No matter what anybody has said, the answer is always yes and. Sometimes this is a route to humor. You know, George, you're really a jerk. Yes, but I'm consistent. Yes, and I'm more than that. To out-narrate is always to remember that there is a larger story, the story of a life with God, which includes all of the rest of life, those things that bring us pleasure, those things that bring us pain, those things that bring us laughter, those things that make us cry, the moments we remember and the moments we try to forget. All of those are part of a larger life with God. So to constantly over accept and now narrate is to constantly remind yourself that you are part, your story is a part of the larger narrative of a life with God. And finally, read charitably. This is frankly the hardest one for me. Simply stated, whatever anyone has just said, no matter how stupid it may be, no matter how offensive it makes you feel, Read it charitably. Think of three reasons, for example, why this person may have said that in good faith or with a full heart or in a well-meaning manner. Maybe they've had a bad day. Maybe they don't appreciate your triggers. Maybe, maybe, maybe. If you take the time to think of three reasons why they might have said that in a good spirit, you will find that you detach from the reaction that you might have had to the comment. You will find that you are able to stay in relationship with them more easily, and sometimes you find out a truth that you just instinctively didn't want to hear. Read charitably. Find three reasons why that person just said what they said. It'll make you stop and breathe and engage them, and in doing so, invariably, you will respond to them in an effective way and not react to them in an ineffective way. So those are my resolutions, if you will. Say thank you, 
over-accept and out-narrate, read charitably. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the presence of God that I think I will find as I carry out this practice. I'm looking to be a better conveyor of the presence that I experience. I'm looking to allow the light to shine through me in a more unobstructed, unfiltered way. What are you looking for? Will your resolutions do that for you? Who do you want to be as we go into 2020? I want to leave you with a suggestion. It might be that we don't know if we engage in the practices that are designed to allow the presence of God to shine through us, we may find what we're looking for, but we never could have conceived it otherwise. Remember, in response to the question, what are you looking for? The disciples went with Jesus. Jesus said, come and see, and they followed him, and they stayed with him. They lived with him. They dwelled with him. They dwelled in him, John tells us in the 15th chapter, and he dwelled in them. What are you looking for? Whatever it is, I'm confident that you will find it when you practice the indwelling with Christ and allow Christ to dwell within you. Amen. And Happy New Year. I want to close with a prayer for our community. O oh, great love, thank you for living and loving in us and through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and all beings. Help us become a community that vulnerably shares each other's burdens and the weight of glory Listen to our heart's longing for the healing of the world. I invite you here to add any intercessions or intentions or thanksgivings that you desire. Knowing that you are better at hearing us than we are at speaking to you, we offer these prayers in all of the holy names of God. Thank you for joining us for this midday meditation. May you go throughout what in Atlanta at least is a beautiful day thinking about the question that Jesus is posing. What are you looking for with the confidence that to be with Jesus is to find the answer? To be with Jesus is to find the answer. And remembering also that you have been blessed by God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth with the grace of God. Thanks be to God.